Howdy, it's Kevin with uh, Map Practical. All right, so today's Lab 3 for the Intro GIS class, and uh, it's all about projections. So I've gone ahead and copied Lab 3 folder into my uh, documents. If you're working on one of the lab computers or remoting into the lab computers, it's just going to be your net ID, right, instead of documents. Um, so let's take a look. We've got Lab 3 right there. we got one thing of raw data, all right? So in the instructions, I just tell you on your Lab 3 to make a new geo database, just like you're doing every week. So we'll make a new geo database, name it for yourself, underscore lab3. There you go. And then inside of it, we're going to make a feature data set. So new feature data set. This is going to be world data. And we're going to set this one up as WGS84. So you might be remembering that 83 from you. So it's going to be, again, underneath the geographic coordinate systems, world and then just plain old WGS84, not any of the variants. All right, and then we'll go with the uh, defaults for the rest of it. Super. So the data that we're going to put in this, we have it from last week. So that's what I like to make a connection to the labs folder so I can see all of my labs. So um, we're going to go into lab two from last week and then the raw data, and we're going to be grabbing these, these layers from the uh, natural earth data that you downloaded last week. So we'll go back to our world data, feature data set, and say import feature class multiple and then we'll take a look over here at cultural and we're gonna put the countries in there and then um, I'm gonna look under physical and uh, I want you guys to grab the graticule remember the graticule is the lines of latitude and longitude we're gonna grab them at 20 degree increments there and then just say okay and that's gonna run and place those inside of our world data feature data set that we just made Cool. So you notice how it's running in the background. Um, if you go up into the customize, uh, and then is it is it ArcMap options? I think it's actually under geoprocessing. Yep. So it's going to be geoprocessing, geoprocessing options, and you uncheck this enable background processing. Then you'll get a pop up for every tool. I just think it's a better way to go. Okay. Um, then in the instructions, I tell you to take a look in your raw data. We can check real quick inside of our world data and see if they came in. They did. That's good. All right. But if we look in the raw data from lab three, there's a readme text right there. And it says to read view. Usually when I see a readme text, I read it. All right. This says this distortion diagram is in WGS84. So if we take a look at this distortion diagram, it's preview. These are the circles that help us kind of see the distortions inside of a projection. But if we right click on it and go to its properties, you'll notice that its current coordinate system is unknown. Now you could change it in here, but this will only change what it thinks it's in. The, the um, data itself hasn't been properly projected. So let's find the right tool. We're going to go up here to search, and we're going to type in define. And in turn, it should be the define projection, and we're going to use define projection data management. And then we're going to drag this distortion diagram in there and see it's still unknown but we're just going to go search under geographic world and put WGS84 in there again just the plain WGS84 and say OK and let that run it was complete real quick alright now we need to import this into our world data so we'll go back to world data and right click import I'm going to do multiple because it'll save the name when I drag the distortion diagram in and I don't need to rename it and let it rip and that was quick. Done. All right. We only have one more piece of data to put in here. So I want to also put the raster from last week in here. So right click on my geo database this time, not the feature data set, right? Feature data set is only for uh, vector data. So right click on the geo database, import raster data sets. And then I'm going to navigate to my raw data again from last week. This uh, natural earth 2 50 million shaded relief with water. You don't want to grab the raster 83 out of last week's geo database because that's been modified, right? So we're going to take the original, drop it in there, and let it rip. And that'll take a little bit longer uh, because it's a raster of the entire world. So let me just check my instructions and make sure I'm not missing anything. All right, I think we got it. Complete, super. And then we'll take a look inside our geo database. All right, so we have three pieces of data in our world data feature data set and our raster 
Okay, let's open up a new ArcMap document. And we're always going to start with a blank, right? And then we're going to set our Lab 3 geodatabase as the default geodatabase. And that's important so that all of our data is coming from the right spot. So we'll go into Lab 3 and just highlight that guy and say OK. And there we go. Um, and remember, if you forget to set that, you can always do it from File, Map Document Properties, and it is already set as that. But you can also store relative path names while you're here. And that just means it's going to look in the, the same folder that the MXD is in for the data. So we'll say OK. And now when we add data, you can see that the geodatabase has the little home icon on it, meaning that it's the home geodatabase for this project. And we're going to add everything. You can just select it all and say Add. And there you go. Okay. Once it comes in, we can go and we can fix a few things here. So, um, oh, looks like I added tiny countries. So that's a mistake on my part. Um, let's go ahead and remove that. I'm going to go back to the geo database. Yep, that was just my fault. And delete that guy. And then I'm going to add the proper one again. Import feature class multiple. I just messed up. Shows the wrong thing. It happens. There we go. Country is the full size, not the little points. Okay, complete. Now we should be done with our catalog. Let's go back to ArcMap and try again. Add all this data. Ah, much better. Okay, so we've got the Graticule, the distortion diagram. We're going to go into the countries, make those hollow, and maybe make them like with a, like a light gray outline of all the countries. Super uh, distortion diagrams, those tend to work out hollow, but I'll make the color of that maybe like a yellow or something. Maybe it'll show better on this video if it's red. There we go. So there's our distortion diagrams. And then our graticules, uh, what could those be? Um, yeah, I think uh, I'll just go with, instead of purple lines for the graticules, we'll go with something like white so they show up today. There you go. All right, and then the raster itself is a little bit oversaturated. So if we go in here, and these are what you should do to all your rasters um, on the display tab, we're going to go with bilinear interpolation. And then on the symbology tab, we're not going to mess with the stretch up here in the show. We definitely want RGB composite so we get the full color, but under, under the stretch type, we're going to change that to none. And we'll hit apply, and you can see that the colors there are now a little bit more natural what the artist um, wanted in the first place. Okay? All right. Um, now is always a good time to save, but first let's set this up as... Oh yeah, let's go ahead and label these graticules. So we'll go to the label options, and we'll have to check that. And then instead of the text string being direction, we're going to tell it to be display, and we're going to go into placement properties and tell it horizontal. And let's take a look and see how that looks. The difference between apply and OK, apply is kind of like preview. So if you think you know what you're going to get, you can just go straight to OK. But if you want a preview of it, you hit apply. And if you like it, then you hit OK. All right, so now we have labels on our graticules. I'm going to go ahead, take this thing over to a layout view. And we're in a portrait mode now, so we're going to change that. So under File, uh, Page and Print Setup. And then you only need to hit Landscape. And there you go. And now I'm going to set up some half inch guides. So we'll do it at a half inch there, and eight there, and a half inch there. And now we can just snap our data frame right into the guides. And in our layout tools, this is a handy zoom to whole page. And then you can also tell it to zoom to full extent. And that's about as far as you can get this one right here. So let's add a title. So insert title world map in WGS84. Remember that's just a coordinate system. So there we go. And we're going to add scale bar. Just put a standard scale bar in there. Take it down below the map. And then remember always adjust your scale so they're a nice even round counting numbers. Nobody counts in 9200 so I'm just going to stretch it out till I get to 10,000. There you go, so there's 10,000 miles. And now I'm going to insert some dynamic text 
and we're going to go with coordinate system. All right, so this is the coordinate system, and there is no projection right now. Now, of course, you put your name on the map and so on and so forth. All right. The nice thing about it being dynamic is if we change the coordinate system of projection, then this will change too. So now's a good time to save. So file, save, and make sure it's in the right folder. Right now it's in lab two, so we need to go up one, get it into lab. Oh, where are we? Let's go to this PC. Um, let me think. Oh, yep, it's under documents, intro GIS, labs, lab three. And this is going to be, um, I'm just going to call this one Nick Manigle, and underscore WGS84. Now in this lab, I don't ask you to turn in this map, but this is the base for all your other maps. Okay, So there we have it, world map in WGS84. Now I ask you to make five different projections this week. Um, this is the base, and you can just use this as your model. So remember, the data back in the Geo database is in WGS84, and right now it's being displayed in WGS84. However, in order to take this round earth and put it on a flat surface, it had to do some kind of projection magic. And so when you have just coordinate system data and you put it in ArcMap, in the background it turns it into plate curie. Now plate curie is the default projection and it just maps those coordinates into a square grid, which is what you see here. However, if we wanted to change this, we could just simply go to the data frame properties and they're over here underneath layers. You can right click and go to properties or you can double click and on this coordinate system tab we're going to go ahead and minimize the geographic coordinate system and we're going to go to our projected coordinate systems down to world and then to start with let's do uh, the good old mercator so there's a mercator world right there and we'll hit ok and watch what happens instantly the data is reprojected right um, and uh, it automatically updated our coordinate system box down here. So now it's a projection mercator still in the coordinate system of WGS84. And it has all this, uh, these other parameters like the eastings, northings, central meridian, and so forth. Okay. Now the world mercator uh, really stretches things out, especially in the Arctic and Antarctic. And you can see that Antarctica is huge here. So it's okay for you to just game this a little bit and cut off, oops, I went the wrong way, uh, cut off a little bit more of Antarctica until you get a nice clean map, right? And then you're just going to change the title. So if I go to the title and I right click on it, there's a little bit of a problem. You see that it's, it's actually um, uh, code is what's generating this title. So the way around this is to right click on it and tell it to convert to graphics. And now if I go into its properties, it'll just be a piece of text. And now I can change this and say world map in uh, the Mercator projection. All right? Oh, probably need an R in there. There we go. Great. And now this map is ready to go. All right? So all you would need to do is do a file, save as, all right? And then change this. So instead of WGS84, it's the Mercator. And then, of course, file, export map, send it out in not AI format, but in a JPEG at about 150 Mercator, and it can make sure it's going into lab three. All right. Now, oh, back in this thing, it's remembering my old locations. Let's go to this PC. There we go. Documents, labs, lab three. And then we're just going to save this out. So then you have your Mercator map done. That's the beauty of setting this up so that you have a template in WGS84. All right. Okay. So Mercator map is done. We can actually, once we've saved that, close it out. And then let's go to the folder for this lab again. Oops, not the lectures. We want to go to labs, lab three, and then open up that WGS84 again. So there we go. And then we're set, ready to go with our template. We already have a title. We already have all the, the things that we need. So to change the projection, again, it's just in the data frame. So one of the uh, other projections that I ask you guys to use is the bone. So we'll go into world again. And the bone is cool because it's kind of like a heart-shaped earth. So let's take a look. So there you go. There's the bone. Now you could switch your map. Um, 
your map page to be in a uh, in a portrait but it's okay you don't need to but you should always adjust your scale bar right so it's a nice round counting numbers maybe 8,000 there we go and then of course you're gonna have your name on all these but you see how the dynamic text already changed you would obviously go up here and change this guy Oh, looks like it didn't hold on to my convert to graphics if we save it while we've done that then okay and then properties and then we'll go map in the born projection and now you're ready to export this out as your JPEG for your report pretty fast if you follow these instructions I ask you to do two more so you'll be uh, choosing the Robinson and also the Hotin projection and then I ask you to uh, look at like the projection cartoon that I give you and the other documentation and experiment and play around and find a, um, a projection that, that you find interesting so for example for me, oops, one projection that I find pretty cool. So if I go up here again and look at the cube world, take a look at this. There's a cube of the entire planet. So you could actually print this on a printer and cut it out and then fold it up and make a little map cube and turn it into a uh, Christmas ornament if you want for your Christmas tree this year. All right. So that's the basics of it all. Now in the lab, I ask you to give me the projection properties and where you're going to find those things. Well, you have the resources of Google and the internet, but I gave you two documents, including the Esri projection library documentation that answers basically all of the questions I'm asking for each one of the projections. Um, that's where I recommend you go to answer uh, you know, the individual questions for these things. So basically what I'm asking you to do is the name of the projection, the family, if it's planar, conic, or cylindrical, some of the important characteristics, like uh, which, which uh, characteristics does the projection try to preserve, right? Is it conformal, equal area, equal distant, or azimuthal? And then uh, important uses, like this is a good world map for you know, K through 12 schools, or this is a good projection for the polar regions. And then also, tell me what happens to these distortion circles. So are they perfectly circular around the origin of the projection, and then in the northern latitudes, they become oblong? so on and so forth all right so it should be a fairly fast lab for you to, uh, to knock out and um, if you enjoyed this please uh, like this uh, video and uh, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next week thanks a lot